they would pay a round trip from Spokane to a gold mine in Nevada. I I don't know why I even bid this low. Today is a Friday. Um, every time during the week I've done something like that, nobody ever wants to pay any kind of round trip. People don't even want to pay a local round trip here. A couple hundred, 50, 100 miles there and back, nobody wants to pay a round trip. And all of a sudden, like almost 800 miles, now all of a sudden they decided they wanted to pay a round trip. <coughs> <coughs> and tomorrow or tomorrow was supposed to be our leg day so I don't even know why I bit this stupid thing and wife's disappointed I think kids are disappointed as well and wife's mostly disappointed so I don't even I'm not in a she made me not be in a good mood when I was leaving because she wasn't in a good mood because of that so I should have, honestly, the way I'm feeling now is I really shouldn't have done that. I never think they would, you know, pay that many miles round trip there and back, but, but they did. Caterpillar stuff, gonna go pick it up here locally in Spokane, then goes to Carlin, Carlin, Nevada, which is a gold mine over there. Somewhere who knows where, there's no directions, there's no nothing, so I guess I'll, be, I'll have to go and figure it out where exactly where they're at, give them a call, find out, and so on and so forth, get directions or whatnot. What a bummer, what a bummer, I, I don't know. First of all, I didn't think they would pay that much. I, I just tried to, I don't know why I even bid it. But it's those times where you don't think that you're gonna get it, is when you get it. And every time, it happens every, every, every time. Same thing here, same area as far as <clears throat> where the stuff is picking up out of. <coughs> the funky thing is they do have ramps and everything, a ramp right there, but the funky part is the only uh, load vans as long as it's under like under 75 pounds or something like that, something that you can like hand carry out, that's all you can really load in a van otherwise you got to be dock high like this guy is or the rest of the trucks and i've actually met this guy before over here he was picking up a, a bunch of stuff and he gave me a pallet to take to gosh i don't even remember if it was either california or somewhere that i took it but he loaded me he got loaded picked it up like this dock high and then we transferred the i think it was two pallets smaller pallets couple hundred pounds onto my van and I took the rest of it to uh, the destination and I believe it was California a long time ago so this was still when I had the blue van ladies and gentlemen whatever is in here this is what pays a round trip from Spokane to a Nevada gold mine and back to Spokane for me whatever is in here something that important to these guys that it pays a full round trip there and back. Remember I told you I'm not going to be saying any more numbers because of certain discrepancies. I guess, you know, certain brokers don't want to don't want to, you know, they want people to find out if they ever find out how much, you know, a carrier is getting paid and how much money they're keeping for themselves which you know in the end I don't even care as long as we're not being taken advantage of in the end I don't care you know it, it doesn't matter as long as we are having you know decent pay that's all that matters but you know brokers you know <laughs> if they're making you know whatever they're whatever they're making is what they're making you know what I mean that's I don't care I don't even care if he made that much more honestly if then you know I don't care if he only gave us half you know what I mean and and 
threw on the other half as much as that. I don't think that happened, but you know, right now people are trying to actually get paid. Well, get loads compared to not getting loads. So it's better to just get a load and make something than make not get a load and make nothing. So that's a that's a one big problem that everybody's having right now, which I ain't even dealing with that. We're in the same boat. We'd rather load people than not load people. So as long as people are moving, we're making something. Drivers making money. If you're sitting, you're not making anything. And you know, I feel it for you guys. Sometimes we do sit. Sometimes I sit. But this week has been this week has been a blessing so far for me. And I'm gonna be driving all night long. I believe it's like a 16-hour trip or something like that. So 16 hours of non-stop driving. It's I'm leaving at 6:17 p.m. in my arrival. Supposedly, if that's even correct, would be like 5 a.m. without any fuel stops or anything. I would guess by 6 a.m. Supposedly, we, we we did it by 50 miles an hour as far as the um, transit time that gives us 16 hours to deliver this. But I'm just gonna go direct and just get it there first thing in the morning. The funny thing is, <laughs> every time I try to film over there, you're not allowed to film at the mine. But every time I try to like, every time I think so, that I'm gonna film something there, these loads on always pick up at night and always deliver there at night. So nobody could ever film anything, no matter what. Even if you wanted to do it by camera, just walking around, can't even do that because it's always all we we as expediters 99.9% .9 of the time always deliver over there at night so I don't know if it's a funny thing that's they do that on purpose or if it's just a, a coincidence for me but that's how it is so wifey I'm sorry that I got this load I really am we should have shouldn't have done it shouldn't have shouldn't have been on it should have went to the lake but Sorry, I, I'm sorry. I really am. I feel bad now, you know. It's money, it's, you know, it's pay, but I feel bad. I really do. I don't know what else I'll film here for you guys that you guys haven't seen before. Most of it's going to be... <coughs> most of it's going to be at night. So there's... I don't do night filming usually. And maybe tomorrow as I'm heading back, you guys will see some part of, you know, what it's like to, to get out of there and so on and so forth. So, well, Mr. Broker sent me GPS coordinates with like, you know, the dots and the degrees and all that kind of stuff. So, all that is leading to where this mine is. And I've been to a few of them before. I'm not saying I've been to all of them or every single one of them, but there's definitely more than one. There's definitely more than one that I've been to, and it kind of seems like every time they're just a little different, or maybe it's just because every time I go out there, something changes and things are different, but usually they're, they're out there kind of in the same location. They're moving mountains over there, people. They really are. If you look up Nevada gold mines, on Google you'll see some of them and you guys will see what they do they blow up mountains then they whatever they blow up they load it into an excavator excavator puts it in the big you know those caterpillars huge trucks that the whole things that truck will bring it to a place where it gets crushed and washed like a sluice box type of thing and from there everything that's not gold is being taken and dumped at a different location so they really really like dig into the mountains or go deeper if they find gold then they go as far as where the gold is so sometimes it's like a canyon out there and that's how it's done you guys can look it up you know the like our european way of getting gold and everything else is always underground mining and underground mining is always like in kilometers going down 
some of the U.S. mines they don't really go down as as deep as as the ones that are in like Russia and Ukraine and everywhere else in Europe. Here they do mostly this type of stuff where they blow up and, and do it this way. I don't know what's cheaper. I think the other way is cheaper, but it's more dangerous if you go underground. It is what it is. Here's my address, just in case you guys were thinking I'm joking. That's the address of the delivery. GPS coordinates. <laughs> somewhere pick them all up pick them up and then take them up to the mountain do a search and then once they're done working they search them again make sure they ain't got nothing they're not sp supposed to have <coughs> and then they head down to the mountain they head down from the mountain <coughs> so like I said these folks here they move mountains Look at this, look where they've been digging. Oh, maybe you can see a little bit, maybe you can't, but you can see that that's been dug right there. You can see that some of this has been dug right here. So these mountains, they get moved. Once they find the gold, they start moving mountains. You guys see what I'm talking about? Where the digging has happened? They got whatever they needed to get out of there and closed that part down. Moved somewhere else where, where there's gold. And I guess that's where I'm heading now because this big old thing here, this is done. See 
burada Seems like I've been to this one before Look at what else has been moved And where it's been dug We've got a big old pit down there They went down in that one. They went down here. All this has been dug and everything I can see so far further over there. So the whole plant has been moved right there and I can actually see it. All their operations. <laughs> Gold on a big scale, peeps. This is not just, you know, some little mine down, down in the ground. This is mountains being moved. Look at more. I don't know if I can stop and do it, but show you guys what else. Yeah. And here we go. I bet you cannot record anything here, so let's go see if they're gonna let me down there or if somebody's gonna come right up and grab this stuff. So as I've said, before I'm waiting for somebody to come up and get it they're not gonna they're not gonna have me go down there because it's something that small if you guys don't remember this small anyways when it's not a pallet like that then usually they just send somebody up and to grab it these days um, I've delivered like small you know small things but not too small and not too heavy and they had me go down there with a uh, what do you call it uh, proper name with an escort but just so you guys know this is not just some little tiny operation somewhere something something these people move mountains like I've said you see this this has all been dug and been just dumped and dumped and dumped all this all this dirt all of it this whole mountain so they'll just dig 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 move on move on move over move over you know they'll dig wash it out get the gold and you know dump out the dirt that doesn't have any more gold in it so this is how this whole thing works and they're literally moving mountains over here uh it took me uh i would say just not to lie i think probably 11 miles worth of you know driving here and the whole thing has been dug up all this 11 miles and i don't know what's further that way I don't know what's on the right side. I don't know what's further, you know, what I've passed. So I don't know how much has been dug up, but it looks like it's a lot already. So, yeah, just so you guys know, if you haven't known before, this is how we get gold in U.S. I guess maybe one way. We'll see how long it takes to get somebody up here to get unloaded. Usually it's a forever process. Could take an hour, could take... Could take two. I've, wait, I've been to this place actually before. I think this this one this one here might have been my very very first mine that I've ever gone to. Kind of looks familiar, but they're all set up the same same exact way. The parking lot's really familiar, but I had to wait forever, 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 a long time ago when I very very first came to a mine. After you do like one, two, whatever couple of these deliveries then you're you know exactly what the procedure is but you know just sit and wait uh and i made it here at 621 621 or well i'm already sitting here but 615 is when i got here uh a.m and i left i'll tell you guys when i left uh, after i got loaded i'll tell you hold on one second okay yeah so loaded at six 6 13 p.m pacific time and made it here at 6 15 and it was like 750 miles just so you guys know so cleared that 750 got an hour of sleep i i was literally yesterday i don't know what's up i guess i'm i guess i'm getting old i guess i'm getting old i don't know but lately with the babies i haven't been getting much good sleep so it's been a little bit of a a little bit of a rough, 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 you know, with a new baby. 
but we'll get through that that's all that all passes it's all good no worries about that but 750 miles 12 hour you know within 12 hours plus one hour of sleep that's what happened not bad plus coming up here is all gravel so you can't really go fast anyways lose time here and it got it was raining and really high wind so i was feeling a little bit of hydroplaning so i had to slow down for that too yeah it's not bad i'm i'm you know i'm proud of myself if you guys are proud of me too throw me that like give me that thumbs up what is this guy doing this is definitely not coming for me but here you go you know deliveries happen here all the time in and out obviously when things are on such a big scale i'm sure they got you know all these all these peeps coming in and out of here but what i tell you what it's all strict those people that do get on the bus they get searched before they come in to work and they get searched after mostly <coughs> for the after that way they don't take out any gold and steal anything here but yeah i've i've spoken to one guy before he told me a lot of things i came one time at night for a delivery waited for him and he showed up and um i was just kind of asking and he told me that they they clear a lot you know they're 100 million in a month he was saying the owner gets or something like that from one mine so not bad like profit wise 100 million so if you can afford to run a mining operation come to nevada you could be making 100 million in a month but to get started out here and do all this make roads bring equipment all that all that all that who knows how many billions of dollars it takes to come and do this it's a big scale peeps it's no it's no joke they're on a huge scale out here you can look it up you can google all this i'm sure they don't really advertise all this there's not really a physical address out here or anything but when you actually google start googling it out here or or start looking around for mine gold mines you can zoom in on some things on you know on google maps and see a little bit just to give you a little bit better idea i don't know if i'll go flying here or if i won't it's starting to rain again I wanted to show you guys from up above, but the problem is you're not supposed to be recording here, and I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to get my footage taken away if they stop, because people are in and out of here, in and out, all the time, driving. And the, the head honchos, they're, they're not on the bus. They're driving pickup trucks just like that one's coming. Maybe that one's coming for me. Let's see. Maybe it's coming to get my package. In case some people think I was joking about, you know, workers being brought here or being driven out of here, here's the bus. Finally, an hour and 20 minutes into it of wait, and I finally had somebody come up. But that's after I made another phone call because the security lady was the one who made a phone call down there and I don't know who she spoke to but they weren't coming so after an hour, a little bit over an hour passed I called myself the phone number I had and then maybe 15 minutes after that somebody came maybe I should have called myself the first time as is as well I don't know if I can fly here for you guys or not if I should risk it or not they kind of have Wherever there's power poles, they got cameras all over the place. And I know you cannot, I know you can't do any filming, so let's see if I take the risk or not. It showed no video cameras, but it didn't show no drone. 
trucks that are being used. These guys right here. These are the beasts. They carry the dirt, and then that dirt gets washed. After it gets washed, the gold gets taken out. When it's taken out, then they put the dirt somewhere else. Moving mountains out here, like I was saying before. Looks like another mine of uh, up there. It's hard to see with this camera, but it's up there. I can see it. Lots of dirt been moved. There's just mines all over here, all over here. So, gold in Nevada, guys. Maybe I should buy a piece of property out here in the middle of nowhere and start digging myself. Might get rich. Or might get poor. Never know. Invest everything and not find anything. And that could happen too. So kind of, I haven't been here before when it's raining. I've been here before when it's like bad weather and snow. But I haven't been here when it's raining, so I don't even know it rains out here. I guess that's how all the all the bushes are, and all the desert stuff is all green for now. It's gonna get yellow soon. So I was driving. All of a sudden, I I'm looking at the ground, and this is not bad already. I already passed the the part where it was like, what is the, all this? I thought it was gravel all over the ground. Gravel, gravel, gravel. Well, it's not gravel. Grasshoppers, look. Look. Grasshoppers everywhere, all over the place. Look at these guys, all kinds of different colors. Insane. Insane, in the desert, in Nevada, grasshoppers. <coughs> there was a lot more of them. <coughs> There was a lot more of them. Gotta check my shirt, make sure nothing else came out of my mouth. <laughs> That's not supposed to. There was a bunch of them, and I didn't even know what it was. At first I thought it was like some kind of, I don't know, maybe leaves or, or I don't, I, you know, heck, what do I know about them? And here's another area where there's a bunch. Look at this, there's a ton. Okay, here's another area where there's a bunch of them again. Right here, look. As you're driving, there's just an insane amount of them, just on the road. Wow. Mind-blowing. I don't know. What do I know about desert? I don't live out here. I only come here and go straight out of here because there's really never anything to wait for here. No loads outbound usually from here or anything. So, I mean, sometimes there are, but usually our drivers are not in the area. A few of them have come from like Sparks, Nevada, out this way to Elko area and pick stuff up, but it's very few in between. There, there's usually nothing for us out here. But yeah, that many grasshoppers? Wow, something up, something's up with that. It's crazy. Fifty-one miles left. I will be home at 7:53. If I wouldn't have wasted an uh, hour and a half getting unloaded today, I would have made it back within 24 hours. Um, but you know, it is what it is. 
So 1,500 miles, 24 hours, it's not bad. And I got one hour of sleep last night. So, so far I'm running only on one hour of sleep. In the end, it'll be 1,500 miles, one hour of sleep, and I'm still going strong, so. Let me know if who else can do that. Not everybody, and you know, age doesn't have anything to do with it. We do have some older folks that can do it, and we've got some young folks that can't even drive a couple hundred miles at night, so it's unfortunate, but you know, expediting is not for everybody, and you guys should, uh, you know, before you invest in a van, before you want to become a, before you become an owner operator, you got to try it and see what you can do all by yourself, you know, and not just on a family vacation or something like that, or, or, or going cross country to a funeral or something like that. That's, that's totally different than what this is. So here you're all alone, you're all by yourself, and this is work versus, you know, doing life things, so. But like I said, it's not for everybody, and that's why, you know, that's why not everybody can do it. That's why not everybody's doing this. And that's why a lot of people are going to be criticizing it going, Oh my God, are you serious? You only slept for one hour and cleared 1,500 miles? Yeah, what's wrong with that? If you're a strong driver, you can do it. You can even clear more than that if needed. So, God bless you guys. Take care. 49 miles left and I'm home. And it's the weekend. Unfortunately, Saturday went by me driving but you know what can you do that wasn't the plan for the weekend but it is what it is and on Monday I got another load so uh, but that one's a local one